Maps and graphs about religion. If you're looking for a good visualization of the Bible Belt, here you go. Share of each state who are atheist or agnostic. Yeah, you have the Bible Belt here like you would imagine, but then there's South Dakota, just an island of, of loving the Lord. It seems like Texas is the most atheist or agnostic state out of everything in the Bible Belt, which might surprise some people, especially because the, the GOP here is quite literally a Christian party now, but uh, we have big cities. I mean, Dallas, Fort Worth, Austin, where I am, Houston, San Antonio, there's a lot of secular people there, so that's not that surprising, actually. You have New Hampshire and Vermont as the runners-up, but then Oregon. Oregon is apparently the most atheist or agnostic state. That's, is it just Portland? Is it just, is it just Portland that does that? Let's see what percentage of the state is just Portland. Oh, wow. Okay. Apparently 47% of Oregon's entire population resides within the Portland metropolitan area. That's Wikipedia, at least. I guess that makes sense. <laughs> As of 2022, the population is 666. Six. <laughs> That's incredibly appropriate. Good job, Portland. Welcome to my living room. I decided to do something a little different today. All of the maps and graphs in this video were made by Dr. Ryan Burge, who is a social scientist and professor at Eastern Illinois University. The data he used to make these is mostly from the general social survey and the current employment statistics data. Sources are cited on every graphic, and you can find links to everything I use down in the description. Here's how wild public opinion is. Issue positions of people who want to ban abortion. So this is what correlates with the position of wanting to ban abortion. So the most correlated position is universal background checks. This is for firearms. I, I made sure to check that out. But 88%, I, I think it's like 90 something percent of the population, maybe 92% of the, the US population wants universal background checks for firearms. So uh, yeah, lawmakers maybe actually listen to us. But here's one that's a lot more predictable. 10 commandments in schools. 87% of people who want to ban abortions want the 10 commandments in schools. That's it's not that surprising. Here's one that is surprising though. <laughs> the Green New Deal. 52% of people who want to ban abortion want the Green New Deal. That is that is so shocking to me. I mean, Muslim travel ban is is just right below that. That's, that's not very surprising, unfortunately. And 67% want debt-free college. How wild is that? You, I wouldn't have thought that, but uh, apparently that's what uh, Nationscape data says. Share of each state who attends religious services weekly. I've always got to check on Texas, 28%, which is actually more mid-tier. It's not, it's not up here with the rest of the Bible Belt, which is over 30%. I mean, all the way up to 36%. I think that's, oh, no, it's not the highest. Utah, of course, is the highest in weekly church attendance. That makes sense. So the lowest percentage are 10 and 9% for Vermont and New Hampshire. So even though they have fewer atheists and agnostics there than Oregon, it looks like the divide is like 10% for those who actually attend services. That's interesting. I found a map that looks at the same statistics for Europe though, so let's compare that. <laughs> wow, okay. So the first thing that hits me here is that there's an entire category for less than 5%. And there's one, two, three, there's five countries in that. The largest number of countries, five to 10%. So you have things like France, Germany, Belgium. Next tier, still 10 to 25%. That's it. You have things like Spain, Portugal, Austria. The absolute lowest attendance here, 10 and 9% doesn't even really come close to the lowest attendance for Europe, which is, is less than five, and that's a huge area. So if Texas with 28% was over on the European map, it would be the most except for Poland. Poland's at 44%. I, I, I don't know why there's such a huge contrast there. If you are from Poland, then let me know. First of all, hey, <laughs> thanks for watching. But let me know, like, what is it like there? What's the religious landscape like? living in Poland. I guess a lot of people go to church. Oh wait, I was wrong. Slovakia, 34%. That's actually more than Texas, but it's less than Mississippi. It's the same as Arkansas. Slovakia, Arkansas, same deal. And then here's the change in share attending weekly. So this is the change from 2008 to 2020 of people attending church weekly. This is kind of all over the place. It doesn't look like there's a consistent pattern in the Bible Belt. I mean, the places that are not particularly religious, like California and New Mexico, have completely different numbers, so that's interesting. Wyoming and South Dakota are actually going to church more often, so more power to you guys. I imagine there's not a lot to do in Wyoming and South Dakota except for going to church, so... The biggest drops here are New Mexico and Utah. I've seen a lot of ex-Mormon videos coming out. 
I don't know. Is <laughs> is that it? Or I don't know. Maybe maybe there's just people moving there that aren't really religious. Who knows? You know, come to think of it, I bet one of the reasons why Texas has had a drop is that so many people from more secular places are moving in so quickly. That's probably a, a part of it. Sorry, I have to make this all about Texas because I've lived here my whole life. <laughs> In 1972, Catholic Democrats outnumbered Catholic Republicans by about 50 percentage points. Today, it's about 13 points. For evangelicals in 1972, Democrats outnumbered Republicans by 25 points. Now it's the reverse. And the main line looks about the same. This is just wild. I mean, as someone who was born after the evangelicals started becoming Republican, a few years after, I can't really imagine evangelicals being more Democrat than Republican. That blows my mind. Catholics, I can see it. I mean, more have become Republican, but still Catholics are majority Democrat. That's just crazy to me that in 1970, there were 25% more evangelicals uh, that were Democrat than Republican. And now it's, it's, more, it's not just the opposite. I mean, it's like th something like 30% more evangelicals in the Republican party than Democrat. That's that's wild. Speculate in the comments about what you think made that change. I mean, that was the era of Ronald Reagan. I mean, not that I was had even been born yet to see that. My parents were around and told me about it. How much does religion impact fertility? A lot. Wow, that's incredible. So at age 40, 75%, over 75% of Mormons have children, but for atheists and agnostics, it's 40% huge difference. I mean, anecdotally, yeah, the, most of the more religious people that I know and like every Mormon that I know has has kids, at least those that are that are my age or around my age, but very few atheists and agnostics my age or even up to age 40 have kids, definitely a minority. So not that my anecdote makes this graph correct, but the data seems to reflect my experience. That's very comforting. Maybe validating is the right word. Share of the population identifying as atheist or agnostic by age. <laughs> you go all the way to 70 and it's down to 2.5% for atheist and something closer to 3% for agnostic. But if you go to down to age 20, you're looking at 8% for each. Really big difference. I guess that's one of the reasons why the demographics of my channel are age 18 to 35 or so. Those are my main audience. Notice how much of a gap there is between atheist and agnostic for older people, like people above 50. Do you think that that's because they were around near at least the tail end of the Red Scare? Are they, are they just kind of afraid of being communists and that's why they'd rather identify as agnostic. I know that the religious community I grew up in was very afraid of atheists and communists and, and you know thought they were the same thing so maybe maybe that's it. I'm sure there are other factors too but that's just what comes to mind for me. The Southern Baptist Convention and United Methodist Church are the two largest Protestant denominations in the United States. The Southern Baptist Church has lost 15% of its membership just since 2006 and the Methodists have lost 20% of, the, of their membership during that same time period. Look at that. Very sharp decline for the Southern Baptist Church. I wonder why that is. Meanwhile, the Methodist Church has been declining gradually, sped up a little bit more recently, but gradual decline for quite a while now. Now that literally hundreds of abuse scandals have surfaced within the Southern Baptist Church, I wonder if we're going to see next year's data reflect the uh, biggest exodus from the church yet. Stay tuned to Ryan Burge's Twitter to find out the largest religion tradition in each state. I mean, the red area being Protestant is about what you would imagine, but for some reason I would have thought that New Mexico would have been more Catholic, but it's actually more nothing in particular. That's, that's surprising to me. New England being majority Catholic is interesting to me. I mean, I know that there are a lot of Irish and Italian immigrants there, so maybe that's a big influence for the Catholic Church. And of course, you have the Mormons dominating Utah. No surprise there. In New Hampshire, Catholics outnumber religiously unaffiliated people, but didn't they have one of, if not the, the lowest statistic when it came to weekly attendance? So I guess there are a lot of people who identify as Catholic, but just don't really go to church. You know, back when I went to church, we called that backsliding. Shame on you, New Hampshire. Now I'm just kidding. You can do whatever you want. Religious diversity at the state level, measured by the largest religious tradition in the state is... Okay, I see. So the color determines what percentage of the population is made up by the religious majority. Okay. As you might expect, the deep south here is 
50% the religious majority. So it, the religious majority there is not just the religious majority, it's the majority of people. So as you would imagine here, 50% of people who are religious are the religious majority here in the, in the deep south. That's, uh, yeah. Utah kind of surprises me though with 40 to 50%. I, I always hear that it's so dominated by Mormons there that I, I would imagine that it would be red, but I guess not. Texas coming in as more diverse than a lot of the country. Go Texas. And then the states in blue have the most diversity. So the West Coast, except for Washington, interestingly, and then at least part of New England. Alaska and Hawaii are blue, and so is Illinois. I mean, that's because of Chicago, obviously. There is systemic racism in policing in the United States that must be addressed. Oof. For people who never attend church, 74% of people agree with that statement. But for people who attend weekly, 41%. Actually, that's the only category that does not have a majority that agrees. Oof, interesting. For the record, I am in the never category, and yeah, I would agree with that statement. That's really sad. I mean, when I went to church when I was younger, I always thought of it as a place where you go to reflect on morality and to make sure that you are holding yourself morally accountable. It doesn't look like attending church weekly has a particularly good effect on people's view of that issue, at least the way that I see it. Percentage who self-identify as atheist or agnostic by belief in God. Okay, this one gets wild. 65% of people who say they don't believe in God identify as an atheist. I think that this demonstrates that not believing in God and identifying as an atheist are two different things. I've said in a recent video that the label atheist is just as much of a political category in the US as it is a, a statement of belief or position. So not everyone that doesn't believe in God is going to identify as an atheist. Out of people who say, I don't know whether there is a God and I don't believe there's any way to find out, 15% of those identify as atheist. I feel like I'd probably put myself in that category. 37% is agnostic, which I'm comfortable being there too, so I, I don't know. Here's what's really wacky though. Go down to, while I have doubts, I feel I do believe in God. 1% of those people identify as atheists. <laughs> Why? What? What? How does that make any sense? I mean, I'm not gonna mock those people or something. They can identify with, you know, whatever, but I, that's just so shocking to me. And then out of people who say, I know God really exists and I have no doubts about it, 4% identify as agnostic. I tend to think that agnostic means that you don't know and that you do have doubts, but I mean, yeah. As Ryan Burge says in this tweet that I'm totally grabbing this from, belief does not equal belonging. Exactly right. The partisanship of self-identified evangelicals. White evangelicals are 74% Republican. Not very surprising. For black evangelicals, 76% are Democrats. So for white and black evangelicals, the statistics and partisanship are almost exactly flipped. But if you look at the other categories here, 34%, 46%, 48% for other ethnicities. Obviously only white evangelicals are majority Republican. I guess when it comes to partisanship among evangelicals, uh, Ryan Burge is right when he says, race matters a lot. Share of each state who have attended church less than once per year. Okay, you know I have to look at Texas, 47%. That's kind of surprising to me given how religious it is, but uh, yeah, I guess 47% of people attend less than once per year. 38% in Alabama, 35% in Mississippi, 38% in Arkansas. I think those are the lowest in the entire country. Meanwhile, you go up to New Hampshire up here, their stat is 70%. Telling you, it's all the backsliding Catholics in New Hampshire, man. They need to get back on it. Looks like Maine and Vermont are close behind, but then you go over to Oregon, only a few points behind, even though they have more atheists and agnostics proportionally. And then there's Utah. I would have actually thought that this number would be lower because, as I understand, Mormons tend to attend weekly fairly diligently compared to other denominations, but maybe I'm wrong. How important is religion to you? And this is by generation. 
For boomers, 46% say that it's very important. 24% say that it's somewhat. So boomers still majority fairly religious. You see the not at all category jump quite a bit every generation except for millennial to Gen Z, which are pretty much the same. There are slightly fewer in Gen Z that say it's very important, but there are more that say it's somewhat important as compared to millennials. I wonder why the not at all category didn't really increase much. This is definitely another one I would say fits with my experience. Most millennials in Gen Z that I know are a lot more meh about religion as compared to like my parents generation and and grandparents generation they're they're definitely majority religious <laughs> we have someone joining us now say hi to everyone <laughs> he always yawns on camera <laughs> By your best guess, how would your current place of worship feel about homosexual behavior? In 2007, 64% forbid it, but in 2020, that's down to 34%. 32% still strongly discourage homosexual behavior though in the evangelical church, so yeah. The trend has obviously been pretty significant in favor since 2007. Okay, now that he sees I'm not doing anything interesting, he just wants to get down, so come on. Even for non-Christian religions, the trend has been about the same, but I wonder how they counted this when it comes to no religion. I mean, how do you answer about your place of worship if you don't have a place of worship? I don't know, if you wanna know about that, I guess tweet at Ryan Burge. Besides for no religion, what is the most accepting tradition here? That would be mainline Protestant. 43% either aren't concerned or encourage homosexual behavior. So I guess if you are gay or bi, then, uh, well, 43% of churches in the mainline denomination say that's okay, so you have slim pickings for churches still. Staying in this theme, the religious composition of 18 to 30 year olds by sexual orientation. So the majority of heterosexual people are either Protestant, Catholic, or other world religion. Meanwhile, out of non-heterosexual people, 51% are not religious. Hmm, I wonder why. Yeah, I've got to say guys, if you're worried about your religious denomination declining, just let gay people do their thing. Just let them in, let them be who they are. Stop caring about that, it's not a big deal. I find it interesting that other world religions and Protestant have the same percentage here, even though the, the difference among heterosexual people is really big. I mean, that makes sense. I'm sure that in other religions outside of Christianity, maybe except for Islam, it's a lot easier to, to be gay and no one really cares. Okay, last one here, and it's a map. Mean annual salary for clergy in 2021. All right, what's Texas at? 50K, so, well, given that I think most clergy probably have a family, since they're mostly Protestant, ugh, you're barely scraping by clergy in Texas. Michigan, though, oof. I don't envy you clergy in Michigan. My thoughts and prayers to you guys. That's really rough. I mean, I imagine that if you're a clergy in Michigan, you probably really love what you're doing and care about the people that you're ministering to and the money doesn't really matter. I think the best bang for your buck is probably being clergy in Wyoming and Montana because the cost of living is going to be low there and it's also some of the highest salaries in the country. New Mexico too, you could probably do New Mexico, that would work. But New Mexico is rapidly becoming more and more secular, so maybe that will change in the future, I don't know. I think something this map shows us is that even though we're, we're used to seeing these very rich pastors on social media and on, on TV like televangelists, you're not making that great of money being clergy most of the time. So I, I mean, this, is, this fits in with my experience at least. I think the vast majority of clergy are in it because they love the people, they care about the mission, they feel genuinely convicted to do what they're doing. There's too much corruption among the clergy, yes, but saying that most pastors are in it for money, I really don't think that's tenable. Except in New Hampshire where you can make 61.9K a year and no one even shows up. That's a racket right there. <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. Okay, so I think that about wraps it up. I hope you guys enjoyed this new kind of video. If you did, remember to check out Dr. Ryan Burge's Twitter and give him a follow. Show him some love in the comment section in case he sees this. I actually just finished his latest book, which is titled 20 Myths About Religion and Politics in America. I very highly recommend it. It's not sponsored or anything, but go check that book out if you like this video. You'll enjoy it. My supporters on Patreon get access to a longer version of this video, so if you're interested in that, then pledge to my Patreon. You'll be supporting my channel, and you'll get access to that for just a dollar a month.
With that, thanks for watching. I've been Drew of Genetically Modified Skeptic. A special thanks to my patrons for their constant love and support. If you'd like to hear more from me, then subscribe. As always, if you are an apostate in need, there are links in the description to help you find community and mental health support. Remember to be kind to others in the comments, and until next time, stay skeptical.